Hey guys, Jim here. I'm going to do something now that I've actually wanted to do for quite a while and have never really had the opportunity to do so, and that's present to you a uh, Tad Gear knife, triple aught design, uh, underscored with three famous lines. We all know the uh, three famous fullers that are marked into pretty much everything, uh, at least knife wise, that you'll see from Tad. Um, for those that don't know, um, it's a brand that most people know as a tactical or outdoor outfitter. And they do everything from jackets to pants to, I mean, if, if you can think of it and you would need it in the quote unquote field, they make it. And part of what they make are a series of tools. And those tools happen to also include knives, which is what uh, obviously piqued my curiosity in their brand. Now, I'm actually kind of mad at myself because normally when I think of Tad Gear, I think of the collaborations that they've done with custom knife makers, uh, of which I always seem to miss the sales on. And because I am a custom knife collector, not really a production knife buyer, um, it's something that I never really looked into before. Why would I? It's a production knife, and it's not the kind of thing that I really collect. And, I mean, we're talking some great makers, guys like Todd Rexford, Todd Begg, uh, Kirby Lambert, J.W. Smith, Eric Oakes, Jim Burke, Peter Recenti, and you know, a lot more than I'm probably forgetting. And generally, they're being offered at really reasonable prices. I mean, put this in perspective. Uh, you can't get onto somebody like Todd Rexford's list. And a knife that he may build and sell directly to a customer for $1,500 you're not ever going to see for fifteen hundred bucks. You're going to pay five, six thousand dollars and more because of the secondary market. But when Tad Gear did their collaboration with him, I think it was like sixteen, seventeen hundred bucks. That means an affordable collaboration with a really great maker, and it really seems to follow suit with all of them. Uh, one that I'm going to be doing in a video later on is this one here. This is their collaboration with Todd Begg on obviously the uh, famous field grade bodega and this is the one they did in the the coyote brown g10 and the uh the black wash blade looks fantastic feels great nice and smooth very very fast but you'll pay less buying this particular version through tad than if you went and bought just a regular field grade from another collector because right now they're not really doing field grades so yeah you're going to pay a little bit more so they're usually an affordable alternative. Now, when it comes to the production knives, like I said, I've always overlooked them. I like the look of the Dauntless, but I always wanted a John W. Smith or I wanted a Kirby Lambert, one of the customs. I'm actually uh, really pleasantly surprised. The quality of this knife really outshines most knives in this price range for a run-of-the-mill production knife. It almost feels like you're carrying a custom, and the action feels like it's a custom. Now, it's on caged bearings, so of course it is going to be smooth. And we don't see, uh, let's stop there for a second, we don't see a lot of people making a manual folder, uh, a.k.a. a non-flipper, that's done on bearings. Yes, some people do, but most people don't, especially in the realm of production knives. So they took that extra step just to make sure it was a little bit smoother, a little bit faster, and I, I think they did an absolutely phenomenal job. So let's talk about the price and the specs on the knife first. You're looking at 360 bucks done up like this with the black DLC blade. And for me, $360 is a really, really attractive price point, especially if you tend to buy only custom knives. And these days, you're not going to find customs from any decent maker in a folder for under 500 bucks. So to find a knife like this, that's this well thought out, this well made, uh, you're probably going to be spending somewhere around $650 to $850 from most makers. Uh, NG10, Black DLC, Bead Blasted, uh, Titanium Frame Lock, the way this is built. So I look at it as uh, a pretty damn good value. Now the overall length on this is 8 inches, so it's not a really big knife with a 3.4 inch bayonet style hollow ground S35 VN blade uh, with the black DLC. Now they also offer that blade in, let's see, a stone wash, acid etch, hand polished, and they also do a two-tone where you get the black DLC 
and the, the uh, flats are done in a nice hand rub satin. So there are a lot of options available. Uh, in the handle you can get two. Uh, it was in the OD Green G10 or in the Black G10. I opted for the Black G10. I'm just not an OD Green guy. Never liked that color. It just doesn't really appeal to me. Now there was another version of the production Dauntless Mark IV and that was in carbon fiber. And that was one I was actually trying to get. I caught the announcement when they were going to be releasing it. And I don't remember what happened. Maybe I slept in or something. But uh, I missed it uh, just by a few minutes. A couple of my friends grabbed them and they loved them. So to look at the Dauntless Mark IV objectively as somebody that doesn't really do much with production knives I have to take a few things out of consideration you know normally I would knock the clip because on a custom knife if you're spending 400 bucks and up I think you should really get a sculpted or somewhat fancified clip this is a production knife and it's under 400 bucks so it's fine and I will tell you this I have carried this uh, knife a few times you can see a few of the marks on there and uh, the clip works exceptionally well it's just tight enough to keep it secure in the pocket no matter what you're doing, but it's not so tight that it's hard to get in and out. It's actually a really practically made clip. Is it the prettiest clip? No. But this really wasn't meant to be a pretty knife, now was it? It really is more of an EDC, practical, utilitarian style knife. I love the action. I've mentioned that, but I also love the ergonomics. It's just the right size, and we talk about EDC a lot, and maybe we don't really dip into it. Me, myself, I find that I can carry a large array of different size knives, and you guys have seen that. I love to carry the Bodega, even though it's a bigger, heavier knife in the titanium version. I mean, you guys have seen some of the monsters that I've carried. Now, just because you can carry it, doesn't mean it's a good EDC, everyday carry, and we really have to focus on that everyday portion. That means no matter how you're dressed, whether you're wearing jeans, jeans make it easy to carry a lot of stuff, or you're wearing dress pants, or you're wearing maybe lightweight shorts, that's when it takes a lot of the, the knives in your collection out of contention for every day because it won't work with every way that you may be dressed. Hey man, I live in Texas. When it comes to the summertime, I want to be in flip-flops, pair of shorts, t-shirt, and out the door I go. I don't want to wear heavy jeans and you know something that's thick and heavy, it's going to make things even hotter. So this is the kind of knife that I know that I can carry in that condition. So it's slim, it's lightweight, it's not very large, it's got a really nice feel in the hand. You've got a very, very large pronounced choil up here, so you can choke up on it. And, you know, for more of your fine cutting tasks, we're holding it back here. You're not quite as precise, but you get up here all the way on it, and you can whittle away at whatever you want to whittle away on. The detent on this, by the way, nice and strong, and that's what helps you with that great flicking action. It's not going to come open in your pocket. You have no concerns about that whatsoever. And really, nobody has a concern about that with a high-quality knife anyway. Let's give you some nice close-up looks at it. Uh, there is that hollow ground S35 VN blade. I really like how the edge shows up prominently up against the black DLC. Seems to be a nice strong coating. Uh, I really haven't cut anything with it because I knew I had to make a video on it. And I like things to look as new as possible when I make the initial video. Now, if you see this pop up in a video six months or a year from now, uh, then we'll see how the coating actually held up. Uh, they do have a USA mark on this side. And then, of course, the Triple Aught Design logo right there on this side. Long fuller. About a three-quarter top swedge. Nice and prominent. Gives a bit of an aggressive look. It's going to be good for piercing as well if you happen to be you know, stabbing into things. That, of course, lines up well with the three fullers that are in the handle. Nice black G10, consistent color all the way through. It's got a little bit of gray coming through, which um, you'll notice in the photography, like the thumbnail for this image, that gray is a lot more prominent. But in real life, with the naked eye under normal lighting, uh, it really looks almost completely black all the way through. 
Some of the things that I really dig about this, uh, you have a very slightly raised gear pattern G10 backspacer. Uh, it's about a three-quarter backspacer, so you do have some open area here. And it feels nice. It's not overly sharp, but it does give you a little bit of extra traction. I love this. Some guys do not ever use a lanyard. So they don't want a big old hole being run through the handle of their knife. But the guys that may want to use a lanyard, you do have a, a hidden lanyard pin right here. Run your lanyard through it, tie it off. It's in a nice convenient spot. allows the lanyard to, to come out and drop right over the clip. You have your hidden stop pin right back here. Big and strong, very functional, nice solid lockup, you feel that. Let's take a look at the actual lockup here as the frame lock engages the blade. Nice and solid, not too early, and certainly not a late lockup. So for me, as somebody that really doesn't do a lot with production knives, when I do, it's the you know more limited edition stuff, or really, really well-made productions. You know, I'm a big fan of the Riat knives and the custom knife factory knives. They're unique, they're well-designed, they're very, very, very well-made, and they tend to be on the higher end of the pricing spectrum for productions from between, you know, $350 and $1,000. I can tell you right now, as somebody that typically wants to carry a custom, this is hard not to put in my pocket almost every day. There are some knives that you're just addicted to, right? And whether it's the, the look of it or the materials that are chosen, or sometimes it's just the action, whether you're flipping it, you're flicking it, or it's a nice, very smooth opening knife like a, you know, Sabenza or something like that. Sometimes you're just addicted to it. And when I go to choose the knife that I'm going to carry that day, I open up all my cases and I kind of look through and Rarely do I just look at one knife and go, you're it for today, baby. Sometimes I look at two or three or four knives and go, oh, I kind of want to carry you. I kind of want to carry you. And what I'll do is I'll pick them up and I'll play with them for a minute. And there's something addictive about the Dauntless Mark IV. When you feel that open up, it feels a lot like uh, the John W. Smith that I have that I made the video on last month, where it has that really nice, solid feel. You've got a solid action with the detent, it's fast, it's smooth, it locks up with an authoritative snapping sound, and it just feels nice all the way around. That's what does it for me on this knife. It's compact, I can hide it away in my pocket, it's lightweight, and it feels really nice. Some of the other things that I like about this are the, they gave you plenty of relief area in the G10 to access the lock, and there's a good amount of jimping here that's not sharp. I've seen some custom makers that either leave that area bare, and it's really kind of hard to get a hold of it, or they do jimping on there, but the jimping is so severe that it actually bites into you. And I really don't want that because, again, I'm the kind of guy, I'm going to play with my knife over and over. So I'm going to be unlocking it over and over and over, and I don't want that tearing up my finger. Another thing I like, again, we'll go back to the clip. Typically, I don't want a spring clip. Typically, I do not want a deep carry clip. But somehow, with this knife, it works out just fine. So this is almost... I don't want to say that I had low expectations of the knife, because I didn't. Otherwise, it wouldn't be sitting here under my lens and in my collection. But I didn't expect it to win me over as well as it did. I mean, I'm sitting here with a much more expensive collaboration with Todd Begg. And you guys know the love that I have for Todd and Mark and the love that I have for the bodega. But I can tell you right now that if I were someone surfing online... And I was deciding between the two, and it was, I can barely afford to get that field-grade bodega. I just don't want to put out that much money. I can, but it's going to hurt. But here's one for only 360 bucks. Which way should I go? I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. There is absolutely no reason not to own this knife. Even if you're a little bit of a custom knife snob, we all need a production knife in our collection somewhere. I'm the kind, I like to use my knives, I enjoy them, but I do not abuse them. 
if I found myself, I don't know, doing something in the garage and I feel like I need a knife and it's going to be somewhat abused, I'm not going to reach for a four or $5,000 custom knife to do that. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not an asshat. I'm not going to hammer through something that I know could possibly damage an extremely expensive knife that may be really hard to replace. That's what I'd want to reach for something, A, that's less expensive, B, that is production, that there is a possibility that I can buy a replacement for it. And this is definitely one of those knives. It's a knife that I want to carry because I enjoy carrying it. I enjoy playing with it. It's got a great edge on it. Good solid steel. And you know what? I wouldn't feel too damn guilty if I used it hard. So for me, in my personal opinion, this really is one of those types of knives that's well-rounded for EDC. Every type of person, no matter how you're going to use a knife, can use this knife. Whether you're just going to carry it in your pocket and stare at it a few times a day and never cut anything with it, you've got a fun knife to do that with that's attractive and feels good when you're holding it and playing with it. If you're the kind of collector that likes a nice knife but also uses them, this is a great choice. And for that guy that's a hard user, that you're going to take this knife with you to work, you're going to cut serious shit, you're going to hack it shit with it, this is also a knife good for that. So for me, in my personal opinion, yeah, it is a damn good EDC. I have a lot of fairly impractical knives, according to other people. They're practical for me. I'm able to carry it. I'm happy carrying it, and it's useful for my needs. But there are still plenty of those knives where somebody that really does use a knife hardcore every day says, that grind's not practical. The thickness of that blade is not practical. The weight of that knife is not practical. So I totally get that. And that's why this knife really does shine for me. It really isn't impractical on any level. I think the only thing you could possibly ever knock is that you do have such a prominent choil uh, that you are reducing your cutting edge. I think it's something like uh, was it like 3.2 something like that on the cutting edge because of how big the choil is but really there are guys out there running around with two and three quarter inch blades three inch blades three and a quarter inch blades and they're able to work through those just fine so I really don't see a reason why somebody wouldn't love this knife oh another great thing the pivot okay it may not be the prettiest pivot out there but you're that outdoorsy person. You're that person that's really out there, man. You're not anywhere near tools. You can't get to your torque set to uh, adjust many of your other pivots, like the one on the bag. Right there, man. You could slip a coin in there and take your knife apart, take the blade out, clean out the, the bearings, whatever, or just simply give it a tighten if you've somehow loosened it uh, where it starts rubbing on the frame. You can make your minor adjustments with just the coin in your pocket. Very simple, very cool, very easy, uh, and very, very well thought out. So that's it for me. This did go on a little bit longer than I expected it to uh, for what is basically a, a fairly, uh, again, basic knife. It's amazing. It's fun. It's cool. It's ergonomic. It's got a great blade shape. It's really going to be useful for almost any cutting task I can think of. And for the quality that it is, it's an affordable knife. Now, I know a lot of people are asking, who makes this knife? Uh, I do know the people that make this knife. Uh, I've not been given permission to disclose that. But I will say this. A lot of the knives that they make for other knife makers, that, you know, so they could do production runs, those knives are of a level of quality that sell for more than this. They're typically going to start around 425 or 450 and go up quite a bit higher. So even looking at that, looking at who makes this knife, the work that goes into it, it's even inexpensive compared to other knives that they manufacture. So have no fear. You got a super high quality knife at what I feel is a great price. Uh, stay tuned because probably in the next week or two I will get to upload the video on the uh, the collaboration Todd Bag Bodega. Give you a quick look at the uh, logo right there. And the logo right there. Great knife. 
If you've never seen any of the bodega videos that I've done, please go watch them while you're waiting for this to upload. Uh, I've done videos on my Big Red. I've done videos on the original field grade bodega versus Big Red, the original titanium bodega. I've done a Bigotti video. So uh, you should get a really good feel for the quality that goes into a bodega in general and uh, obviously my thoughts on the bodega before you make your way into this video. So with that, I'm out of here for now. Thank you guys as always for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.